Hey everyone, this is a live unboxing of something. <laughs> uh, I don't always know what is in the post for this channel, and so something has arrived and we are going to have a look at that. I've decided to do more of these unboxings because I feel like part of this YouTube journey is telling stories. My experience as a YouTuber, my experience, what you want in life is to document these moments because we are not gonna have a device coming out every second day in a while. You know what I mean? Um, that this will eventually slow down and so I want to document this time and remember what happened because I, I as a tech lover, I think this is a very special time. Um, and so uh, I want to document that. Let's have a look here. Um, so this is another H700 device from Anbenek. And the one thing that I do feel, so this is a four by three, this is like the SNES, um, like the, t the, the TV systems game, like your Mega Drive, your SNES, your NES. This is like the final say in that. And the H700 is perfect for that. And we are slowly but surely getting decent firmware on this, but you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of this H700 in terms of what it can do. There, there are a few little hangups here and there. So um, it's not the ideal, like I think what Ampernick are trying to do is do like a final say on a lot of these devices. But I always say that, and then they bring out a whole new series of devices. But I do feel like, these H700 series just, they lack something, you know, like just that X factor in terms of the software, even with the custom firmware, we're not really getting to like that sweet spot that we did in the past with a lot of these devices. Um, you know, like Garlic OS was, was something amazing. Um, and wow, <laughs> that is a good looking device. Now, one thing that Anbenek, uh, you see this is actually, glass is actually raised, but they, they've been doing a thing where the screen is recessed and you put your screen guard on and then um, it kind of levels it up. Whereas if we put a screen guard on here, we're gonna run into trouble. Let's see what they've put in the box, but that is a good color. That is a really, really nice color. I thought it was gloss. It's a matte finish. Matte finish, uh, I think it's gonna pick up on fingerprints a little bit. Let's feel these triggers. I said digital triggers, like proper digital, like you can hear them clicking. And then the bumpers, the left and right, L and R, very clicky. Annoyingly clicky. Um, very light device, I was expecting it to have a little bit more heft. Two SD card slots. One nice thing with the stock firmware is they've actually improved on the music player. So if you look through the H700 series, so it's any of the RG35, well the XX actually, because now this is not a 35 anymore, but any of those RG something something XX devices, they've got this H700 processor in it, and it's actually got a decent music player. So if you're into like retro MP3s, um, all of these are quite nice for that. Okay, and then it's got RGB here. We'll just see how much of an RGB it has. Okay, so no screen guard, so they've decided not to go with the screen guard on this one. USB-C. Let's have a quick look at the manual. Um, so the nice thing about them, like, incrementally improving this firmware every single time they make a release is that this manual actually becomes relevant. Layout, emulator shortcuts, which is nice. Um, online play, so with these devices you can connect and play two player games. They tell you, okay, game import, the, the card needs to be FAT32, indicator lights, game streaming, Bluetooth settings. The other nice thing that they do with these is that um, they allow for Bluetooth controllers and um, quite a nice, easy to use setup. 16 million color RGB joystick lighting. Support constant light, breath, rainbow. Okay, so we can change those. All right, so let's start it off. Hopefully it's got a bit of a charge for us to do a little run through. But okay, so I, I slammed it a little bit for not liking these H700 devices, but you know, they are a good compromise in most aspects. You know, um, it's decent power. It's gonna play a lot of games all the way up to Dreamcast, N64. Uh, obviously your PlayStation 1's going to play on here. And then all of your old handheld systems like Game Boy Advance, your Game Boy, obviously. A little bit of PSP, tiny bit of PSP on here. But yeah, um, the, it's, uh, these devices are a good compromise. Let's power it on. Volume on top. Um, it does have a mini HDMI port, which is nice reset button. Um, USB-C, um, you know, the, the, one of the things with these devices is charging has been an issue. Um, and even to the point now with the SP model where we had a little bit of overheating on some of the devices. So, you know, there, there are issues. 
Um, that is an amazing screen. <laughs> the resolution is really good and it's just a lovely screen. I think this is the same screen that we got on the, um, the Anminic Arc, which is a great screen. So we really are getting spoiled there. I hate those button sounds. So PSP, they've put some vertical arcade on you. See their Dreamcast, N64. NDS, it's not a touch screen, so we're gonna struggle a little bit with NDS, but we can play some DS games. Mega Drive, Let's see what they've done here. They've just got some emulated Pika 8 games. I really highly recommend you go and buy the Pika 8 system if you're gonna play some Pika 8 games. Uh, there's that music player. I don't know why they've got this new thing where you have to select the SD card every time you go in somewhere. I mean, obviously not great sound. M for menu, where's the M for menu? Oh, there's a menu button here, that's quite nice. Buttons feel good. Uh, very nice D-pad, it's a very similar looking D-pad. So, and I love the D-pad on here, so that is good. It's very light, eh? I almost feel like this could be a good metal device. <laughs> So no issues with Street Fighter moves. So NES has got a really nice filter on it. Yep, I like this filter. With Powerblade, you can do a vertical shoot and I'm not touching up um, and it's, uh, there's definitely false diagonals on this D-pad. Let's just check this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite bad. Let's actually go to, see here you can also select calls by pressing Y. It tells you in the menu what to do. I must say the stock OS, as ugly as it is, um, does work very well. Start to favorite. <laughs> this is actually pretty bad. I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. There, I mean, that's quite bad. <laughs> but. You know, um, like I said, it is a nice D-pad. Um, I don't know why these D-pads are getting worse and worse in terms of these false diagonals. Maybe we're just paying more attention to it, I don't know. So I searched for Darkwing Duck with the NES on the standalone emulator, not the RetroArch emulator, you get full screen. So, you know, you get stuff to play around with. I do wish that once and for all just unify the whole system. So the LEDs, you can switch them on or off. Um, you can set the brightness. But I have noticed now, so any of these settings where it, it, it pulsates a color or flashes a color, whatever, you have to go and create that color. So now I have to sit and mix colors to make the color I want, uh, which is kind of just crazy. Um, I really don't like that. Uh, blue, let's add some blue here. I mean, it does mean that you can dial in the perfect color, but it's gonna take you a couple of hours. <laughs> Anyway, so there is that. I like the rainbow, so I'm in luck because I can just leave it there. And then I'm just gonna make sure that the brightness is low. Put it about 30%. Not ideal, but it's okay. So to get back to value on this device from uh, Lit NXT, let's have a look here. What are the devices they suggest here? Uh, for $50, you can get the V10 from Parkity, not really comparable. Um, you can get the Anbenic SP for less than this. And I would argue, okay, you don't have joysticks um, and you got those clicky buttons, but that is, I mean, this is one of the favorites of the year. I mean, this is just a lovely and a special device. Like that is just something special. So that's for less. For a little bit more, you can have the 353, a V, the VS, uh, which is more powerful. Uh, you've got, like I said, the RG35XX, which again doesn't have joysticks, but is a lot cheaper. Um, okay, the RG35XX, see the plus is the same price. So they've carefully uh, positioned that. So the same power, the same price. Trim UI Smart Pro is a very good contender here. So if you don't mind, the like a lot of people complain about the fact that the screen is just too big, you know, um, you've got the massive screen, but with, I need to do a video on this because with the new firmware and that guys are saying that they are getting decent PSP gameplay out of here, not all the game, games, but it does play. So for less money, you're getting a bigger device. These are um, dome switch buttons, but I actually really like them. I need to go back to this device because this is very good value compared to this. So the crappy joysticks. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, a very good contender. If you are looking at this, look at this. Okay, and then, then another one, it's a 16 by nine screen, so a lot of people will argue that that is just shitty, but uh, a 16 by nine, the this PowerKiddy RGB, what is it called? 10 Max 3, ridiculous names that they have for these things. But this, again, a 16 by nine, was it not the greatest D-pad? I think very comparable to this and it is $5 cheaper. Yeah, I don't know. Personally, I prefer this, but if you want a true four by three screen, this, this is, you know, it ticks all the right boxes because of that four by three screen. It's cheaper than the Anbenic 35XXH, which has got a smaller screen. Miu Mini Plus is considerably cheaper than this. Also, again, no joysticks, but fairly powerful, plays everything up to PS1, so this is a little bit more powerful. That's just a quick look. With Anbenic, you do know that you're getting a fairly good device. Like I said, we have had a little bit of charging issues here and there with this H700 chipset, just in how it manages charging, how it manages power, it doesn't have a true um, uh, like low power mode and all that. So there are little quirks like that, but here you're getting an affordable four by three device with a very good screen, an okay D-pad, um, nice action buttons, these beautiful switch RGB joysticks, which I really like, um, a, a fairly unified menu, a decent music player. So there's a lot going for this very clicky sh uh, bumpers. So, you know, there's with this device, for the price, you are making compromises for sure. I feel like at this price, you shouldn't be making so many compromises. I feel like maybe at this price point, you may be better off looking at something like the Anbenic Arc because this thing is near flawless. It doesn't have joysticks and is um, aimed towards Sega players, but this is a fantastic NES and SNES and Mega Drive device. I just feel, and this is the second time I'm doing this with an Anbenic device where I'm saying, you know what? Anbenic have got better devices in their stockpile than the device that they're currently releasing. So uh, just have a look. Don't just jump into any hype. Like if somebody's saying that this is the best thing ever, I don't think so. I think this is okay. It is nice. And it, uh, I think a lot of four by three guys are going to love this thing. But in the end, there are a lot of options out there. So before you just jump on the bandwagon with this one, check out the other options.